We've now defined all the assumptions that we need to talk about tastes. We started with the rationality axioms, completeness and transitivity, that allow us to talk about choice. And then we added the assumption of monotonicity, that more is generally better, of convexity, that gives expression to the fact that we have a taste for variety, and the continuity assumption that says small, tiny changes in our consumption bundles don't cause huge changes in how we feel about them. We can now use those assumptions to derive the fundamental tool that we're going to use to talk about tastes. And that tool is called an indifference curve. So what do we mean by that? Well, let's start with some initial bundle of goods. You can have two goods, x1 and x2, an initial bundle A. We're going to say that the indifference curve that contains bundle A is a set of bundles that's just as good as A. In other words, the set of bundles that makes you indifferent between A and those bundles. So the indifference curve that contains bundle A is the set of bundles that is just as good for the consumer we're modeling as the bundle A. So we start with the bundle A, and we begin to use one of our assumptions, and that is the monotonicity assumption. Monotonicity says more is better. So if we consider bundles down here in this square, they have less of everything. So all these bundles must be less preferred than bundle A. So the bundles that are indifferent to bundle A can't possibly lie down here. Monotonicity ensures that because bundle A has more of everything relative to these bundles down here. So these bundles down here make us worse off. By the same token, bundles that have more of everything, bundles that are up here, would make us better off than bundle A. So the indifferent bundles can't possibly lie up here. Monotonicity ensures that. So the indifferent bundles to bundle A must lie here and here, which means that whatever this indifference curve is going to be, it's going to have a downward slope. It can't have an upward slope, because then it would cross into these areas and make us happier or less happy than bundle A does. So monotonicity implies that indifference curves slope down. So we know now that indifferent bundles are going to lie here and here. So now we can go to the next step. Start again with bundle A. And since we know that the indifferent bundles are going to lie somewhere here and here, we can just pick one down here and say, suppose that one is indifferent. So suppose we find one, say a bundle B, down here, that's indifferent to bundle A. Well, now we have a setup that lends itself to thinking about convexity. Because convexity was the assumption that said, if you're indifferent between two bundles, then the averages between those bundles are going to be at least as good, usually better. So the average between these two bundles is going to lie on the line that connects them. So the strict average would be maybe here. Use a different color. 
So if convexity holds, it means that this bundle is at least as good as A and B, usually better. So suppose that it's better. This bundle is better than A and B, which means it can't lie on an indifference curve that contains bundle A, because the indifference curve that contains bundle A contains only bundles that are indifferent to A. But now we can use that no sudden jumps, the continuity assumption. We can start at this point and say, well, since this point is better than A and B, if we slowly take stuff away from you, if we slowly move into this southwest direction in the graph, we're making you slowly worse off. Since you started better off than you would be at A and B, as we slowly make you worse off, eventually we're going to hit some point at which you're just as well off as you were at A and B. But that point's going to lie somewhere in this direction from the point that's better than A and B. So by using monotonicity, we're taking stuff away, so we're making you worse off, and the no sudden jumps assumption that we're making you slowly worse off, we know that as we gradually do this, at some point we're going to hit a point that's just as good as A and B, a point that lies on the same indifference curve as A and B. So now we have three points from the indifference curve, and those three points tell us what the shape of that indifference curve is going to be. We can connect them, and what we get is a shape that bends towards the origin. That shape comes about because of this convexity assumption. The convexity assumption said that this point is better than those two, or at least as good. If it was just as good as A and B, we'd actually get a straight line for the indifference curve. That's a special case we're going to call perfect substitutes later. But if this point, the average, is better than A and B, then it must be that the indifference curve bends towards the origin. If we had an indifference curve that didn't bend towards the origin, if it looked like this, then we'd have a point A here and a point B here, and all these points would be indifferent. But convexity says that the average is at least as good as these more extreme bundles. So if this is at least as good as A and B, then if we give you even more, you're only going to get better off. So you can't end up on the same indifference curve. You're getting better off than you were at A and B. So it can't be that the shape looks like this. It has to be that it bends towards the origin. So convexity, this averages is better than extremes assumption, implies that indifference curves bend to the origin. And this gives you a sense of why we actually call this convexity. If in this graph we find the set of points that's better than this indifference curve, the set of bundles that are better than the indifference curve, we would look at bundles that lie above this indifference curve. Take this bundle, for example. Suppose we look at bundle C out here. That bundle has more of everything compared to this bundle. And we know that bundle is indifferent to A and B. So it must be that bundle C is better than this bundle. It has more of everything. And since it's indifferent to these two, transitivity tells us that C must be better than A and B. Because if it's better than one of the indifferent points, it's better than all the indifferent points. And that's true for every point that lies above that indifference curve. So if we find a set of bundles that's better than this indifference curve, it would be the set that lies above. All these bundles are better. All the bundles below are worse. And so the set of bundles that's better than a bundle, the set of bundles that's better than bundle A, is a set up here, which is in fact a convex set. Remember, 
a convex set is a set where we can take any two points in the set and the line that connects them also lies within the set. The shape of this set is in fact a convex shape. And because the set of better points is convex, we call this assumption, the averages is better than extremes assumption that gave us its shape, convexity. That's where the name comes from.